Welcome back everybody to Farming Simulator 22. I'm an old guy gaming and in this episode we're going to sell our clothes and extra wool, make a little bit of cash, and then um, see where we are. Let's take a look at the sales first and see what's going on in sales. Nothing we're interested in here. Uh, let's look at our finances over the last month or two. I don't remember the last time I went over this these with you guys, but in March, we purchased field 71. Uh, no. What did we buy for $306,000? Oh, the JCB tractor. Right. Okay. Yeah. So we bought the JCB and maybe something else. Uh, in March, and a little bit of construction costs happened because we did some landscaping work. Uh, the 680000 that was for field 71 right there. Uh, vehicle running costs. Almost 30000 in March because we used our stuff a lot. Leasing costs is 47000 because we leased the, the Dalbo roller. And um, what else? We leased something pretty expensive in March. I can't remember off the top of my head what it was now. <laughs> so something. Um, property maintenance is usual. Production costs are usual. Uh, we made $111,450 off of our greenhouses, which is pretty good. Um, $954 in fuel. Nothing really, uh, well, we haven't really gotten through April yet. So, and uh, biogas, ooh, yeah, okay. So this is higher now because I started putting, um, I started putting, whatchamacallit, slurry. Uh, so I'm starting to keep the biogas plant supplied with slurry. So this is a few thousand dollars higher than it was previously. It was, it was usually around $62,000. It was lower in February because I kind of screwed up on uh, keeping it supplied with silage. Um, so that's working good. Uh, we paid out over $8,000 in wages. Miscellaneous, again, it's really hard for me to remember where this miscellaneous money comes from. But whatever it was, uh, it was taken away from us, not added to us. Uh, we have a loan. Yeah, we had, uh, oh yeah, I had to take a, a, a small loan out to finish purchasing all the seed that I needed to replenish the greenhouses, but it's just a real small loan, not a big deal. Uh, and we paid, uh, $15,000 in pallet and goods distribution to our workers. Um, one thing too, I'm not you, I'm not really using the, um, whatchamacallit. Uh, easy development tools, the admin menu uh, to pay workers anymore because I'm I'm just assuming that this figure here is is what's paying all of our farm hands. Um, there was a comment made. It was actually though on an earlier video uh, by an individual who um, thought that I was ruining the game by using all the automation, like the auto drive, that sort of thing. Um, so two things about that. First, it's not ruining the game for me at all. I, I enjoy using it. It's, it's a lot of fun. And secondly, I'm okay with doing it from a realism standpoint because, you know, we are paying uh, workers wages, you know, to, to do all that work for us. And that, that's actually this, you know, the wages costs uh, right here. Uh, so I, I fully think it's legit. It's not uh, ruining the game for me at all. And my other argument for it, uh, in case anybody else feels that way, by the way, is that, you know, we have a big farm now and in real life that there's just too much to do for one person. So we need help, you know, we need uh, employees, farmhands and whatnot to help us with all this stuff. And that's kind of what, you know, auto drive and course play and some of those other automation things, you know, the universal pallet auto load is, is really representing so we can continue to grow the farm. Uh, so anyway, I just wanted to make sure that uh, if that individual who made that comment is watching this video, or if any of the rest of you are kind of feeling that way, that's, you know, where I'm coming from in terms of, you know, using all the automation. And I like it. I think it's fun. It doesn't ruin the game for me at all. It's, it's a lot of fun to set all that stuff up and see it in action. Okay. Anyway, enough said about that. Um, so we are now in April and um, I'm just trying to remember what I leased in March, I, well, we did lease another forage wagon, but we're leasing to own it. So that's a fair chunk of, of that money there. Um, yeah. Okay. So let's, uh, do this. Let's jump in our pickup truck and we are going to, uh, go to the warehouse and we're going to load up our 
clothes and our wool. And there's probably a little bit of wool over at the at the sheep barn too, so we'll go pick that up as well. All right, bring on the clothing. This is our single most lucrative commodity that we make is clothes. Uh, no, not production menu. I want clothes. And we have nine pallets. Auto load all of that. Oh, I need to tell it to do the partials too. Six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so that's all of those. Where are we going to take the clothes? Clothing is going to be sold probably at the grocery store, either that or one of Mama Joe's places. Here we go, close. Uh, grocery Mart is paying over 10000 Yep, that's where we're headed. Okay, um, the Grocery Mart will not take wool, so let's load up um, wool as well, and we can take that to whoever's going to purchase the wool. We have 26 pallets of that, so very nice. And then, again, we'll have a few more pallets out by the sheep barn, too. All right, that's all it's going to let us put on there. I can put more, more on manually, manually, but then it doesn't let me strap it down, so this is good enough. All right, where are we going to take the wool? Let's take a look-see here. Um, you know what I really should probably do? Well, eh. we'd make more money if we turn this wool into fabric. The problem is that the clothing store consumes the fabric as fast as I can make it. So I, I can never accumulate it. So really the only way we'd be able to do that is to, is to put in a second spinnery. Um, okay, so the difference between fabric and wool, it's 3,800 bucks per thousand liters versus 1100 bucks per thousand liters. Do I have any, any fabric stored up? I don't think so. I think that's always in the red in, in our warehouse because it's just constantly being pulled into, whoops. Yeah, it doesn't even show up in here. Right, okay. If we were going to... Here, let's go get these clothes sold before the price changes. Let's do that first. We'll make um, around $90,000 off the clothes. So I just have to figure if, if we're going to put in another spinnery, where are we going to put it? I suppose what we could do is buy the one that already exists. Um, that's a thought. It's not super far away from our our farm. Eighty-eight thousand. Okay, almost ninety thousand. Uh, all right, let's stop here for a minute and, and think about this before I sell all this wool. The spinnery is right here. So it's up north of our place. It doesn't matter if we buy one and place it or if we buy this one. It's gonna, the cost is the same. So that doesn't, that's not an issue. But let's go back to our property first. Because here's the thing. Unless I install yet another mod, I have to haul the wool from the barn to the spinnery. It doesn't automatically distribute like the other stuff does, which really kind of never made sense to me. Maybe I should just install. There's a mod that'll do that. Um, well, let's just run over here for a second and take a look-see. 
If we installed a second spinnery, which is this building over here, where would we put it? Let's do a quick save and hop into the, the build menu for a minute. There's just not really any room in, the, in our little triangle here for another building. So that's really out of the question. Um, that area is not really being used a lot, but I think that's, that's probably not going to be enough room. There's this spinnery too, but this one's a little bit larger. I, well, actually, is it though? Is the footprint of it any larger than the other one? It's taller. No, I don't think so. It's the, the footprint's the same. It's more of a European style building. It's kind of cool looking, actually. I like it. We could maybe force it to go in here if we use the free mode. Um, let's grab the other spinnery. The thing about the European style building as neat as it is, it, it's not, it's kind of out of place, at, you know, architecturally speaking with everything else that we have. So we could put one here, I suppose. Uh, I'm just trying to think if that's going to screw us up in any way later on down the road. We'd have to... We'd have to move that tree. It's not really going to cause a problem with our shed. The other thing is, you know, we could start putting some productions in, on this field. Too. I mean, that's another option if we, you know, but we lose the hay from it. Not that that's that big deal. We can't do anything over here because this is where we're going to put the large cow barn when the time comes. I had originally planned on, you know, purchasing this field and clearing all this out and putting more of these silos in. But I want to see how much, you know, grass we bring in with the new field 71. Uh, which, by the way, should be all germinated over here now. Yeah, look at that. What the heck is that? A little spot maybe we missed with seeding? Look at all that grass, you guys. Oh. Uh, huh, yeah, it looks like we missed a few spots. So I'm going to have to fix those. I'll worry about that later, though. We don't really have any room over here. We do have this area over here, but I'm planning on putting a big shed over here at some point in the future. So I don't really want to use that space up. We can't put anything over here because we need room to maneuver, you know, the trucks in and out. So that's not an option either. So this is really about the only place I can think of that we could potentially use. Um, so why don't we do this? Why don't we go to landscaping and trees? And it looks like that's the same elm tree there. But what we'll do is we'll put this one over here behind the shed where it's not going to hurt anything. And then we have a smaller elm here that we could probably put more right here okay and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna make these two disappear and I'm just gonna delete them because I don't want to bother with trying to chip them and all that I don't have the equipment for that oh that's what that lease uh, what a lot of that lease was I think in February or March, uh, we released the cheap, the chipper, right? Okay. Um, let's de delete objects on and we're just going to delete you and we're going to delete you. 
Okay, I don't think the brush is going to be an issue. Let's turn this back off so I don't accidentally delete something I didn't mean to. Now we'll come over here, get back into this menu, and grab the... this spinnery. Okay, and then I want it to... Go here. That's where we drop. Whoops. That's where we drop off the wool, right? Yeah. Okay. We'll push it back a little bit. Uh, we're going to have to back in if we put it that way not that that's that big of a deal yeah i don't think i don't think it's going to fit right if we try and make it go long ways so let's bring it back to about here how's it looking on this side Yeah, I think that'll work. I think that'll work. I mean, it's a little bit odd that these are blocked here. In fact, yeah, that's... Although we're not really going to use the spawn because we're going to send it to the warehouse, I still want to fix that so that those doors aren't blocked because that's not very realistic. So let's come back here. We'll go into landscaping and painting and asphalt and increase this okay let's um let's bring it back down and change it to a round This is the where the pallets spawn, right? Okay, hold on a sec. Oh, no, no. Okay, the pallets spawn here and the input's there, so they're both on the same side, which is good. Okay, I gotcha. But still, I mean, we'll never actually use this for realsies, but... These doors should be accessible. Um, and what we might do is go to landscaping and sculpting and leveling and just kind of um, raise this up a little more back here just to satisfy my sense of practicality and realism for this. That would be a, a tight turn getting in and out of those doors, but... Okay, and we'll go back to painting and... Do that okay um I'm thinking too that let's go back to a square here and bring that out to there and then maybe make this gravel Oh, it's not letting me paint there because I'm standing too close. Nope. Wrong button. I wish I could get rid of this foliage, but every time I try, it just, it just comes back again when I reload the game. Because it's part of the 
that structure. Okay, let's do this. I think I'm just going to turn all of this into gravel. Just looks kind of weird otherwise. Well, it looks really weird now. <laughs> <laughs> with this. Well, here, at least for today, we'll get rid of it, but it'll come back later. <laughs> yeah, I think that I like that. All right, so that means, ladies and gentlemen, that we are no longer going to sell wool straight up. We are going to turn it into fabric, and we're going to sell the extra fabric. So let's go to here and... Open the production menu, and this is our second spinnery. We want to set fabric to distributing so that it sends it to the warehouse. Okay, and we're going to call this spinnery, and let's get back out here for a minute. We're just going to call this spinnery 2. So that way we know spinnery 2 is purely, its purpose is for us to just sell extra fabric. Now, the other thing we could do, we could also just put in another tailor station and double our clothing production. That's that's really what we should do. Oh, for goodness sakes. Uh, isn't it, though? I mean, the clothes sells for so much money. Oh, for Pete's sake. If we do that, where am I going to put the... Where am I going to put the other spinnery? I mean, the tailor shop. Uh, you know, with the way things have gone over the years since I've had these, we make close to a hundred grand a year off the clothes. So we could be making two hundred grand a year if we put another one of those in. It's just that where in the heck would I put it? Unless we again we start using space on this field um let's just consider for a moment come let us reason together um there is okay that's the other oh no that's the barrel factory that's all the new stuff from um silver run forest don't we have two tailor types of tailor shops Grain mill, dairy, carpentry, bakery. Tailor shop. Maybe we don't. I guess we only have one one style. Um We would want to put it probably like this. We don't technically need access to any of the inputs or outputs because it's all just distributed. How much does this sucker cost, by the way? A hundred grand. Okay, we can afford it. The where's the tailor shop on the map? Cause see, the, that will get distributed. We don't have to deliver to the tailor shop. We just have to deliver the wool to the spinnery. So that's the spinnery. Where is? I don't actually even know where the tailor shop is. There even one on the map? On Elm Creek. That's the cereal factory. That's a dairy. Why is my game really choppy all of a sudden? That's the grocery store. Sawmill. Johnson's. What the heck, man? My map is like all glitched out. Okay, now it's... That was weird. Okay, so that's Johnson's. This is the red marble. 
uh, what's that? Oh yeah. The grocery store. That's the store. I don't even think there is a tailor shop on Elm Creek. If there is, I've never been to it. I've never had a reason to go to it. Debris crusher. Carpentry shop. That's feed and grain South. That's the biogas place. Yeah. I guess there isn't one. Okay. Well, Hmm. So if we're going to do that, we're going to have to put one in regardless. We're not going to be able to buy an existing one. I almost never go out to the sawmill. I go to the animal dealer all the time. Well, okay, you know what? I'm going to... Um, What am I going to do? Does fabric sell at the same time as the clothing? Yeah, okay, so both the fabric and the clothes both sell best in April. So, but we're talking about making $3,800 per thousand liters versus $10,000 per thousand liters, though we would have a lot more of it, though. I'll tell you what, here's what we're going to do. We're going to just stick with this for now. And I want to see how much extra fabric we end up with in a year's time. Because if the quantity of that is significant enough to... I, I don't think it's going to be as much as the clothes, like, you know, $100,000 worth. But if it's, you know, if we're making like seventy, eighty thousand 80000 off of it, just because there's more of it, then that might make it worth it. So, yeah, let's just do this, and then if I decide that the clothing's not giving us enough extra, then we'll put in a, a, a second tailor shop next year. Okay, that's what we're going to do. Sorry it took me that long to figure all that out, guys, but <laughs> it just kind of happened. I wasn't planning on messing with any of this stuff, but you know how things go sometimes. All right, let's grab this other wool that we have and we'll put that in the new spinnery as well and that's just going to be pure gravy money for us because the other one um, will support the clothing well you know the other thing that could happen now that I think about though is oh that was weird if both of these spinneries can increase the production of clothing now that would be a good thing too so if we're getting more than a hundred thousand dollars worth of clothes next year that means the second spinnery is helping to supply that and it's being more efficient and that that also makes it worthwhile uh in and of itself i hope that made sense to you guys i was just kind of sort of thinking out loud there a little bit Very good. Okay, and we have a little bit more wool over in the warehouse that we'll pull back out and just make sure both of these spinneries are chocked full. Beautiful. Okay, let's take a look and see. Uh, we're going to be harvesting our barley next month, so I think the chickens will be okay until then, but I'll keep an eye on them. If they're not, we'll, we can buy a little bit of grain from the store. Uh, what are we looking for? Uh, we're looking for here. So, spinnery 2 is not quite full, but it will be. Uh, after a couple more months, we'll probably have this thing chocked full. And the fabric's being distributed, so that means it's going to go into the warehouse. And hopefully that will boost this. Uh, because, again, like I've said, I mean, that our current spinnery 
can't keep up with or just barely keeps up with the tailor because this is always just being transferred through it. It never has a chance to store up, which is a good thing, of course. Um, and that thing's chocked full there. Okay, good. All right, fantastic, guys. So we already looked at the sales, right? Yeah, we did. <laughs> Nothing that we're interested in. Uh, I don't think there's really m much else for us to do here in April than I can think of. Uh, normally, we would be doing our first contract on Field 71, but guess what? <laughs> we own 71, and it's bigger. One of you guys mentioned in the comments that you, you thought it, we might be adding anywhere from 30 to 40% more yield to the field. That would be wonderful, wouldn't it? Yeah, well, again, I, I'm not, there's not really any way we can tell for sure, not now anyways, but whatever it's going to be, it's going to be good. And um, so... I just, I'm curious to see if we'll be able to fill up, if we'll, if we'll be able to start accumulating the silage, because right now, um, it's going, almost all of it's going to the biogas plant, and we can keep the biogas plant going without any trouble, but we're not accumulating a significant amount of extra silage. But now that we have field 71, um, we should be able to start accumulating it and start filling up both of those uh, silage factories there. Okay, guys. Well, I think this is probably a good place for us to just go ahead and wrap things up uh, for this episode. Oh, I was going to pick up the eggs while I'm over here with all this. So let's do that. Now, when we... So next month in June, we're going to have our... Um, hold on a second. Okay, so yeah, we're not going to cut our hay in June. It'll be July that we do our second hay cutting uh, because I want to hit it on the second the second growth stage. But uh, June's going to be a big month for us, though, because we're going to have two big barley fields to harvest. Uh, so that's going to be fun. So that'll be kind of the main focus of June and the next episode. Um, so I'm going to pick up these eggs, take them to the warehouse... And I will see you guys in uh, or on June the 1st, and we're going to do some barley harvesting, and it should be awesome. We're going to have more grain than we've ever had since we started this playthrough, and it's going to be amazing. We're going to, you know, top off our chickens and then probably completely fill up our grain mill. Well, I don't know if we'll completely fill it up, but we'll get it really full. And if we do happen to have any extra grain after that, well, I'm going to keep, actually, no, I'm going to keep some extra grain because uh, we need it for chicken feed. So we'll probably keep, I don't know, 30,000 liters or so in the, in the silo. I don't think we have any more because I think I moved it all out and put it in the grain mill, uh, the flour mill. Uh, we look for that here. So I had a bunch of wheat in there, but yeah, uh, I took that out a few months ago, as a matter of fact. And anyway, yeah, so I guess that's it. Guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment, share the video, and we'll catch you in the next episode. Bye-bye.